Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker, and today I am very excited to be unboxing with you the Hooks and Needles Spring Knitting and Spring Crochet Box. So this video is 100% sponsored by Hooks and Needles. They sent me the boxes here for free so that I can share them with you guys. So I am very, very excited to be doing this. This will not be like a normal review or anything. We're just going to do an unboxing and get a first impressions. However, I do plan on coming back to these boxes, letting you guys know what I think as I work through them, just kind of how I would with a review series. So I am very excited for this. As of filming this today, Thursday, April 18th, 2024, the box for the spring limited release is still available. This is a limited seasonal box. So there is a knitting box and there is a crochet box. They are different and they both contain different things. The box is 33 97 for the seasonal box. However, Hooks and Needles does also have a subscription box. Their subscription box is $39.97 and they were gracious enough to send us a discount code. So with the code Happy Crafty Homemaker 20, which should be here on the screen and in the description box down below, you can receive 20% off your first box in a subscription. I'm very excited about this. So ironically, they reached out to me right after I had put them on the list of subscription boxes to review. So this was kind of like a serendipity kind of moment. So we can kind of touch our toes into what Hooks and Needles has to offer because they have had a very viral marketing campaign going on right now, especially for, you know, viral for our community, the Yearny community. But I was, I, I've been inundated across my socials with their subscription box information. So I thought it was interesting that they had reached out to me to do an unboxing and to share with you guys what is in the seasonal box this spring. So without further ado, let's crack on. We're going to start with the knitting box. So I'm going to be honest, things are a little, um, catty bumpus in here. I had originally tried to do this as a blind unboxing and that did not quite work out. So we're going to do this as a more traditional unboxing where I have already gone through the boxes, evaluated everything and gotten my first impression. I'll be honest, I'm out of practice with the blind unboxings. It's been a while since I have done one and I, I just stumbled over my words far more than usual. So first off in our knitting box, we have the cutest little tin of tea. So this is a jasmine tea. And that is just like the cutest little ever. We have two chocolates. One is a Lindor, Lint Lindor truffle in pistachio. And the other one is in almond butter. So I will be passing these off to my husband. He enjoys the... Uh, refined sugar treats that we get in the subscription boxes that do not go to waste in this household. I just don't partake. Although I may have to take a nibble of the pistachio because that is like one of my all-time favorite flavors of just about anything. We have two size seven knitting needles. These do appear to be bamboo. These have a tubular cable on them and they are both 16 inches long. I think they're both, double check, yeah. They're both 4.5 millimeters. We have a 12 by 12 piece of fabric here. Oops. So I was very excited to see this. To me, this immediately screams this is more of a kit or is more in line with being a kit versus just being a subscription box with, you know, a project and some yarn. Uh, we have reviewed a couple of subscription kits like this before, and I personally really like them. They, you know, aren't for everybody, I understand, but when you are somebody who likes to take craft projects on the go with you, it is nice to have something that comes together in a box like this where you need to supply very limited things in order to make something with your box. I really am pro kit. 
We also have some really sweet little buttons here. I love the design on these little buttons. They're so simple. So, 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 so simple. But they're incredibly cute. I kept thinking how cute those would be on like a child's cardigan. And then we have, well, first off, we have a pro, uh, booklet magazine pattern thing. There's, we'll go over this. But we also have three 50 gram balls of Portuguese cotton. So when I was on the website looking at them, I noticed that they mention their yarns either come from, um, Portugal or Italy, uh, which I am not sure I have ever had yarn from Portugal before. I've had yarn from Venezuela, Chile, Brazil, Peru, North America. Um, and the North American yarns, like there are some that are manufactured in Mexico, but most of them are actually manufactured in the U.S. that I've tried, uh, distributed by a Canadian company now. But I... Uh, it's just one of those weird things. As far as Europe, I've had Italian, French, Spanish. We've had some stuff from the UK. I don't think I've ever had anything from Portugal before, other than like wine. Anyway, so these are 50 gram balls of the Frisia blends. Apparently I'm still having some brain issues. Uh, the, this is 100% cotton, 62.75 yards, 50 grams. This is a size four and recommended hooker needle size is the six, seven. Well, in this case, it says knitting needle only because this is the knitting box, but we have these beautiful springtime colors as it is the spring seasonal box. The cotton is very soft. It has a unusual texture as far as the, um, when you run your fingers down it, it's got high definition in the ply, but you don't feel anything on it, but it's not satiny, but it doesn't feel burry like kitchen cotton. It's very smooth and very soft. It's very pliable while still being, you know, a dense fiber like cotton is. But it was interesting because this is a different feeling cotton. It feels more like some of the like Z twist. A lot of crocheters were using. It's got more of that kind of feel on the hand. It's a very uh, different like touch feel to it. So I'm interested to see how this works up because this will be something very different for me to knit. And if you've been around my channel before, I have slowly developed a fondness for cotton but I'm very picky about the cottons that I use because I like smooth fibers. <laughs> I like soft and smooth fibers. So the booklet part of this, I'm going to set this to the side and hopefully not knock anything off my table. This is a little bit different than what we're used to seeing in boxes now. And I am assuming the subscription box comes with a very similar style pattern book. So we do have our patterns in here, but we have a little bit more extra to this. So we have a table of contents here that describes everything that's in here. You can, there's three different patterns. We have, you know, what's in our subscription box here. Spring ideas. These are kind of geared slightly more towards knitters. We have seasonal fiber selection. So what's good for the seasons, bamboo, linen, and cotton, which you'll hear me preach constantly. I live in the Southeast of the U S it is very hot and humid here. We are actually expecting a high today of 89 degrees Fahrenheit. The pool water temperature here is already up to 76 degrees. So Cooling fabrics are definitely a pro, things that breathe or things that you can very easily do loose stitches with is a good thing if you're going to wear it. We have an introduction to the yarn that was in the box and kind of a prelude to 
the themes of our projects here. Um, I don't think there was anything. I don't think there was anything else about this though. Okay. So our first pattern is the bunny slippers. This is a two yarn ball difficulty, still considered to be a beginner's. One of the things I noticed with this is I really like the photos that they include with the pattern. There is extensive progress visuals for how to do things as you go along. I think that is exceptionally important when you have a box that is geared to beginners through advanced. It, there's nothing wrong with learning more advanced, intermediate advanced techniques. As a beginner, you're going to hopefully learn them eventually anyway. But if you're going to have a box that's geared to all three skill levels, you really need to make sure that you are including the information for somebody who's maybe never seen this before. So... I do really genuinely appreciate the amount of pictures and photos that they included along with the pattern. And then here's our finished little bunny slippers here. So instead of doing like a bow, they did little bunny bunny ears. Our second pattern is a crossbody bag. This one is a three balls intermediate pattern. This one says it calls for the three balls of the Frisia blend. In this one, you know, we're going to have some stranded color work here. We also, as we come along, we're going to have some intarsia across the back of the daisies there. I don't think they show the back on this one. But once again, full photos of showing the walkthrough of the pattern. And then the last page is our finished little bag here, which I think is absolutely precious. And then we have the flower pillow, which is a level four. This one says three skeins of freezer yarn, size seven needle. This is what our fabric is for. So we have, once again, our pictures as we go across. This is what our finished topper is going to look like. And then they even talk about sewing and sewing on our backing onto the pillow. And here you can see where we have the stranded work and the intarsia capture work there. So the last part is different ideas for what you can do for spring 2024 crafting trends. We have blue hues. Blue is the big color of the season, sunshine and citrus. This season is a range of citrusy yellows, soft tones, um, pastel paradise, cardigans, eco-conscious crafting, and then we end here with a crossword. And we also have this QR code is for feedback. So in talking to my contact with Hooks and Needles, he did express that any type of feedback that we have, they're taking into serious consideration as people are getting the boxes. This is a fairly new box, so this is not you know, something that's been around for a long time. They do also have a shop on their website. So if there's something you get that you like, you are able to purchase more, which I think is incredibly important. There are lots of times where we've gotten things and one of my biggest laments and regrets or frustrations with a box is that you cannot get any more of the yarn either it was a, it's already been discontinued before the box has gotten to us, or it's something that's not available in our country, things like that. It gets very frustrating when you can't obtain extras. Say you make something and somebody really loves it and you want to give it as a gift, but you still want to keep one for yourself. What do you do? So I do appreciate the fact they do have a store. They appear to have notions. They appear to have yarn. They appear to have uh, a lot of project bags and things. So they do seem to be trying to gear towards being a one-stop shop for your knitting and crochet needs. So that is kind of exciting. It's They're definitely expanding and definitely building a new thing. And it's kind of exciting. I think I just used the same word like four times, but... <laughs> So on to the crochet box. Now this one, 
I have to say, I like the knitting box. I really love the projects as you're definitely skill building in the knitting box as far as going from beginner to intermediate to advanced knitting. I like the yarn. It's beautiful. It's right in the carry color palette zone. However, this crochet box is phenomenal. So we do have another book that we'll go through. But this is our box for the crochet box. So these are 50 gram, 100% bamboo balls of yarn. This is a size two yarn. So the recommended needle size for this is a two to three. It's a 2.75 millimeter hook, which is smaller than an e-hook, but I can't remember what size that is in the alphabet sizing. Once again, this is made in Portugal and this is the perennial blossom. So we got three balls of this. We have this beautiful coral color. We have very beautiful intense green. And then we have a white. So when it's paired with these two, this looks like super, super bright white. Then if you pull it away, it it's not that it's off white, but it's a creamy true white. And it does the same thing in person, which is absolutely wild to me how different the light reflection is off of these two being so bright to make that so extra bright white. I'm not moving this closer or away from the light source. I am on an angle to my room. That just happens with the... Anyway, I thought it was really cool. This stuff is so incredibly soft. It is buttery, buttery soft. You can see the sheen, I'm going to pull it back like this, you can catch that sheen just a little bit on the yarn. It is very satiny, very, very smooth, incredibly soft. Uh, I am a huge bamboo girl. I love bamboo fiber. When this hit the market, like steadily, we were seeing this regularly like 16 years ago, 14 years ago, it, not just in, in handicrafter stuff, but in mainstream textiles, sheets, shirts, things like that, socks. I was instantly in love. I am not a huge fan of a lot of satins because they are polyester and tend to retain heat very, very much. However, you can get that same satiny feeling out of a bamboo fiber that is 100% breathable. So if you've been around the channel before, you will have heard me extol the benefits of bamboo as somebody, once again, who lives in the southeast of the U.S. We are humid and muggy. We are sticky and hot. It is... I mean, even in the winter time, I prefer to use blends that are breathable because even our winters are humid. So... I was very excited about the yarn that came with the kit for the crochet kit. We also received two hooks, which of course I knocked one of these out of the container picking it up, but we have two 2.75 hooks. These appear to be bamboo handles as when you put them in your hand and just even rub them for a second, they almost instantly warm up which is an advantage to the wood needles and wood hooks. Even though I am a stainless girl, I will be honest, if you have any type of issue with uh, stiffness and arthritis in your hand, I would recommend something with a wooden handle just because it does warm up and it kind of becomes like a self-infused heating pad as you're working with it. And you are able to crochet or knit just a little bit longer, I find, with a nice self-heat, like, wood. I don't want to call it self-heating because that's really not what it is. But self-reflected heat out of a wood hooker needle. That's just what I have found personally. But we do have two of those. The hook head on these is not overly pointy or overly rounded. It's kind of right there in the middle. The throat is not super deep. But I thought that was nice. Um, I'm not quite sure why we got two of the exact same size. I know all of the patterns use this size hook. 
but as somebody who constantly has projects going all the time and always looking for a hook, I'm not arguing with it. We also got the same two Lindor truffles, almond and pistachio. We also received the same cute little tin of tea, which I can't wait to try. And then to make this a fleshed out kit, we did receive a set of safety eyes and a packet of polyfill, which I just, I think the, the vacuum seal polyfill thing is just like the cutest thing ever. It's a perfectly logical way of sending that in a box. And I think it's just brilliant. Put the knitting stuff back with the knitting stuff real quick. I made a mess. Okay. So in our crochet book, which once again, beautiful. And I would like to speak to the quality. We do have a nice cardstock cover on these. And the pages are not super thin. These are thick, glossy pages for the pattern book. So once again, we have our table of contents. We have our overview here of what is in the box. Once again, this is the spring seasonal box. Seasonal spring crochet box. We have some spring inspired tips, just like we did in the knitting book. Once again, some more project ideas. This is about dyeing yarns, which I think is really cool. Seasonal fibers, once again, the bamboo, linen, and cotton benefits to using those. And then we start introducing our projects here. And these were so cute. Can I just say, before we get into this, I think these are adorable. So our beginner level project here is some floral pot coasters. And once again, we have the same excellent photography showing what stitches are, where you're going, what you're doing. The only thing I don't like in the crochet book, and this is such a minor mittenly thing, this is the last picture we have of the finished coaster on its own. Because when you come to the final project page, you have the laid out coaster with this cute little cup on it. And then you have this little pot that you make here with the other coasters inside of it. So you never can see the fully laid out coaster. I love these projects, by the way. I've seen them done with roses. I've seen them done with forget-me-nots. I think the little cup of coasters that rolls up to look like a little bouquet of flowers is like the cutest thing ever. Our next project is the Snuggle Bunny. This is a three ball intermediate project. We have, and this is where you're going to use your eyes. You're going to use your polyfill here. And look at this. I'll put your buddy. Don't put your buddy, buddy. Devin's like, why are you talking about other people's pudgy bellies? And then you can make him a little scarf, and he's just a cute little stuffy. I think he's cute. So, next up, we have the Blooming Flower Wreath. And I... There are five different flowers, I think, that go into this. Yeah, five different ways to crochet a flower. So, we've got, you know, pictures of the flowers... We have the assembly of the wreath, but this right here is so clever. If you have ever made a crochet wreath and tried to make individual leaves to kind of work as filler, it's a pain in the butt. But not only does that leaf garland kind of fill in the empty space between the flowers, you can see where it wraps around the wreath and then draws up to be the little hanger. I think that's so cute. That's such a cute way to do that. It's different. I like it. Nothing about this feels like other things we have received before as far as the patterns we've gotten. There's, they're similar, but not the same. I, it, and maybe it's just been a while since I've done a kit subscription box like this before or 
it's been a while since I've done a kit subscription box. So we have our crafting trends, the crossword puzzle, our feedback QR code, and actually with the patterns, if you notice, there's a QR code here in the front of each pattern that also takes you to the digital copy of the pattern. So you have the analog copy as well as a digital copy that you can access. I like that too. I like that too. So my initial impressions just having done the unboxing. I do think it's worth the $33, which is, you know, out of the gate and an important thing that we talk about. I do see the value in this. I do think it's a decent value. Uh, once again, when we start talking about like the pattern values and things like that, or personal preferences, that is person to person. Um, but getting a kit like this, I do think the effort that's in there, the grab and grow pro go project aspect to this, I do really like. So I have not tried the subscription box yet. I am curious to see how that compares to the seasonal box, what to expect on a regular basis with the subscription box. Um, both yarns are excellent yarns. Of course, I think the, the bamboo is my personal favorite. I think one of the best things about this box, and it just shows the thought and planning that has gone into the boxes, is def it definitely shows up in these. And I, I know this is like most people's like least inspirational or inspiring or um, part of a subscription box or to get a box in general. But when you go through one of these and see the thought and planning that went into cultivating and curating the kit. You can tell if effort was actually put in. Number one, very seasonally appropriate. I do know that this is their first seasonal box, so they're definitely going to be putting a lot of effort into making sure that this is a good box. But the patterns in here are also not just seasonally appropriate, but kind of Topical for a lot of us right now, a lot of people are starting to, you know, we're getting a lot of pregnancy announcements from friends and family. We're getting a lot of that seasonal change where we just want to cast off the wool and everything and start playing with something that's a little bit lighter. We're changing what we're crafting for. We're changing our seasonal crafting behaviors. So I think all of that is kind of represented in the patterns that are chosen for us here. We're revamping, you know, in part of spring cleaning, we're revamping our home decor. We're trying to kind of just be a little bit funkier with things. I know a lot of the 90s styles coming back and I thought the purse and the pillow in particular were both very appropriate for that. Um, that's just like fashion trends going on on the larger, uh, larger stage, larger scale, not just the seasonal. Um, so I have a feeling we're going to see a lot more of like the daisy designs and stuff, the colorful daisies again. Uh, you know, saw those in the seventies, saw those in the nineties and now that nineties style, uh, we're not quite to Y2K again, but we're starting to edge that way where we'll see like sequin scarves and scarves that are meaningless. They don't do anything. The like skinny, narrow tie scarves and stuff. I have a feeling those will be kind of more what we're seeing moving into next year, but maybe we'll see more moving into the summer. But I don't know. I was very, very excited. I am just absolutely captivated by these colors. I'm not sure what project I'm going to do yet. I would love to try my hand at another amigurumi. I am not very good at making them. So I was kind of leaning towards that way. So anyway, you guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I always love to hear your opinions on these things. Which projects do you think I should focus on doing out of each of these kits? We will be revisiting these as I work on the projects and get something made and have something to share with you guys to further our journey here. So anyway, what do you think? I love you guys. I will see y'all real soon. I can't wait to get on with these and
Bye, you guys.